What happens if you actually take the best-selling wireless earbuds from Creative, the Outlander Air version 2, and level it up with features which literally check all the boxes, and what's more, still keep it under 80 US dollar? Well, you get the all-new Outlander Air V3 ANR wireless earbuds. Right, so grab your drinks, grab your snacks, Let's get in there. The Creative Outlander version 3, or I'll just call it Outlander V3 from here on, was released back in June 2021. So it's it's a fairly new year, but about a year old now, just slightly over a year. It retails for the same price as the V2, previously at 99 Singapore dollars on the Creative website, but with sales and promotion, you will definitely be able to get it at much lower for me, I actually got the V3 at 59 Singapore dollars, which is actually under 42 US dollars. Now, for the past two weeks, I've actually been testing the earbuds at my daily driver. So I will actually include a timestamp down in the description below if you want to jump to any particular segment. Firstly, in terms of design and build, I'm not gonna talk much about it. So I will actually ask you to go to this video, which is actually the unboxing of the Creative Outlander Air V3. Go and check that video out because I'll actually share my first impression and my first look and I compare it with the V2 and this kind of stuff. Once you go and look at that, then come back to this video whereby I talk more about my personal thoughts. Now, in terms of comfort and fit, you can see here, I'm actually wearing it right now. This is how the earbuds will look like on the right side. This is how the earbuds will look like on the left side and this is how they look like on the front view. Just like Apple, just like Sennheiser, I mean, Creative actually decided for the for the V3 to retain the similar design earbud shape as the V2. Uh, but it's just that the V3, the earbuds, they are slightly smaller and they're slightly thinner. Just like the V2, the V3, they're actually very comfortable uh, to wear them despite you know, the size and weight. This is because they're actually pretty evenly distributed, right? So you actually forget them once you actually put them on. Now it comes it actually comes pre-installed with medium-sized silicon uh, ear seal, but of course Creative will also provide other sizes. They actually provide you the small size and the large size so that you can actually mix and match them around to get the best seal and fit. Now personally, I feel that uh, the silicon seal on the V3 is rather thin, so I actually had to switch out to the L size so that I can get a better seal and fit. The ear tip on the V3 is actually very short, so the silicon seal and the ear tip only goes in slightly into your ear canal, while the rest of the ear bud they just sit outside of the ear. So you can see from here, it actually sticks out quite a fair bit. Now, once you get the right seal and fit. The moment you put them on, the very first thing you will notice instantly is this vacuum effect coming from both earbuds. Now, this is actually the very first time actually experiencing something like this with in-ear earbuds. Uh, I think this vacuum effect. But the good thing is that the earbuds, they actually do not actually trap any heat. Uh, and it do not press against any part of my ears so I can wear them for many many hours without feeling any ear fatigue or any ear pain. Though I actually have two issues, two, two issues with the silicon seal. The first one is whereby every time I remove the earbuds, the silicon seal will be left in my ear, either the left side or the right side. And this actually happened quite a few times and it seems like this is actually due to the fact that the V3, the silicon seal, they are not able to have a very good grip on the ear tip you know, even though I mean there's a there's a groove on the ear tip itself, um, but it seems like maybe it's because the silicon seal they are too thin, they are not able to have a very good grip on the ear tip. Uh, but luckily, the silicon seal they are, they they actually do not sit very deep in my ear, so I, I was actually able to remove them very easily. Now the second issue is the vacuum effect. Now the moment you actually pull the earbuds out from your ear, you actually hear this squishy sound. It's like, remember, you know, have those soft toys, you can just squeeze them, they'll make the kind of squishy sound. Yeah, that's exactly what you'll be get. That is something similar you'll get when you remove the V3 earbuds from your ear, right? Which actually kind of irritates me after a while, you know, because I don't get such effect from any other earbuds those that goes in here, I don't get it at all. This is the only one that I get it and it, it's getting on my nerve. Let's move on to the music quality. So as I mentioned earlier, Creative uses a six millimeter biocellulose driver. And in terms of audio code, the V3 actually supports SBC and AAC. 
there is actually no aptx this time now in terms of overall sound quality i would say that the v3 has a very has a slight similar performance to the v2 but the v3 actually has a much better overall balance the one that i noticed the most uh, obvious is actually the bass now on the v3 i feel that the bass is more balanced is more controlled compared to the v2 and uh, which is actually personally i said it's a definitely uh, it's a much welcome upgrade. Uh, vocals and instruments are cleaner. Uh, they have greater clarity and details compared to the V2. And of course, finally, users, you can actually go all crazy with the EQ. Yay! <laughs> this time is via the creative app. Yes. Okay, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, further on. The hissing issue, which I actually mentioned during my review of the V2, for those of you who missed that, do click here. You can actually check out my review on the V2 and come back to this review on the V3, continue with it. Um, it's still present with the V3, but it only happens with a small handful of songs when you up the level to like 80, 90 or even maximum volume, right? It only happens to a small handful of songs. So far, it only happens to one song, and I can't say that song. I'm scared that I'll get a copyright strike. Now, I hope that Creative will actually release firmware updates in the future to actually rectify this issue. But overall, at this price point, I feel that the Creative Outlander V3 Air is definitely one of the best sounding earbuds you can get at the moment. Now, in terms of active noise reduction, Outlander V3 is actually Creative's first pair of wireless earbuds with uh, active noise reduction feature. Now, you notice that Creative actually calls it A&R. Yes, A&R and not ANC. Now, this is because A&R is uh, like ANC minus or it's like it's a younger brother of ANC. Of course, it has its pros and cons, all right? <clears throat> so, I'll be talking about that now. But still, of course, the, the A&R on the V3, it does a fairly decent job. All right, at reducing uh, noises, such as uh, when I was walking on the busy street or I'm walking along a busy road, it's able to reduce you know, the road noises uh, or I'm sitting inside the bus, I'm sitting inside you know, uh, the, the, the subway, it actually re uh, reduces the, the, the noise created by the, by the train, created by the bus. Uh, to make the whole journey more a little bit more enjoyable. And of course, via the creative app, uh, it actually provides five different levels of uh, noise reduction, right? This is something you can go and play around with it. The ANR can also be utilized together with phone calls. So this is something which Creative actually start using it about a year ago with the version three. Okay, and but of course we'll touch about the impact of the ANR on phone calls a little bit later when we talk about microphone quality. Now let's talk more about the ANR. Like I mentioned earlier, the ANR is actually a light version of the ANC. So therefore, it's very important you manage your personal expectation because it won't be able to remove noises as much earbuds which comes with hybrid ANC such as Ugreen Hi-Tune X6 or the Edifier W240TN or even earbuds which come with full ANC such as uh, the Jabra ET 85T, the Apple AirPods Pro, the Apple AirPods Pro Gen 2 but I feel that it's fine for listening to music or streaming a video uh, in relative peace when you're on the move, all right? It, it still does its job. It's just that it's not as much as those earbuds I mentioned. Let's talk about the ambience mode, right? Or some of you call it transparency mode. Though this is Creative's very first attempt, but I feel that they kind of nail it uh, for the ambience mode or for the transparency mode. Firstly, the environment noise which is coming through the earbuds, they are amplified cleanly they are not like over process a lot of earbuds with uh, transparency mode or ambience mode they, they, they tend to over process the environment noise it makes it very unnatural but for creative v3 it's very natural uh, it's very clean and of course via the creative app uh, it actually provides five different levels of uh, ambience mode there's something you're actually going to play around with it 
Now, in terms of battery life, the Creative actually rated the V3 to have up to 10 hours of battery life with music without the ANR. On my own testing, I was able to get about 8 hours of usage on music playback at 70% volume with ANR on, and uh, I was able to get about 8 hours on phone calls with ANR on. I have to be very specific because you can use ANR in phone calls. I got about 8 hours for phone calls and Zoom with ANR on. Uh, for mixed usage, it was about 6 hours, and that's uh, basically breakdown of 2 hours on phone calls and uh, 4 hours on music, all with ANR on. Finally, let's talk about the charging case itself. The charging case itself is actually rated to provide 26, 20, 30 hours. Yeah, about an additional 30 hours. Okay, so you're actually able to charge the earbuds up to three times fully from zero to 100. It only takes about less than 60 minutes. If you need to use the earbuds urgently, it's cool to know that earbuds come with quick charge, whereby 10 minutes of quick charge will give you about two hours of uh, playback. If you want to juice up the, the case, do take note that because of the, of the large battery, it takes about two hours to charge the, the, the case to be full from zero to 100 via USB-C. If you want to use wireless Qi charging, it is possible, but be at a much slower rate. I tested it out, took about almost three hours via wireless Qi charging, all right? Which is, I think, I mean, it's absolutely fine if, if you're just going to be putting it on your wireless charging pad before you go to sleep, and the next morning when you're up, it's really fully charged. That's perfectly fine. Now, in terms of connectivity, the earbuds of the V3 that actually utilizes uh, Bluetooth 5.2. So I was able to get about nine meters at home. Initial Bluetooth pairing is a little bit tricky, just like the V2. The earbuds were actually short individually. And not only that, on the V2, I was able to pair it on the first attempt, but on the V3, it took me quite a few attempts before I was able to succeed on the, on the third or fourth try. If you want to use the earbuds uh, also for phone calls, like while you're watching a video or you're listening to music, it switches back and forth effortlessly. Since I've been using the V3 for about two weeks now, there are actually two issues I face. First one is that subsequent reconnection between the earbuds and the phone is actually a chore. And I do hope that Creative will actually solve this issue because it was on the verge of like just throwing this earbuds aside. It's one of the best sounding earbuds. Freaking long battery life, noise reduction. But it's just that the subsequent reconnection between the phone and my iPhone, something that I need to redo every time. And like try that two or three times before both sides can be properly connected back with my with my phone. And this is not only on iPhone, it also happens on my Android phone as well. And secondly, th this is after the earbuds, they are successfully reconnected with my phone. Play my music, I start walking, I start doing my thing, and then suddenly the earbuds can be disconnected. It's very weird. It can actually happen while I'm actually walking on an empty pathway, empty street. I'm the only person there walking down road. Pop! Earbuds just lost the connection. Crazy! So. These are the two things which I hope that Creative can actually release a firmware update to actually patch this issue. I was on the verge of not doing a review for the V3, okay, but thank God I did this review so I can, I can actually voice out all these issues I'm facing with the V3. Next, in terms of control, Creative actually continues to utilize this touch control for the V3. Since it's something not broken, right, so just continue. From the V2 to the V3, you use touch control. And this time around, Creative actually crammed all the possible commands you can think of. ANR, ambience, volume control, power on, power power off, you name it, the V3 actually has them, everything, all right? But what is more important is that this time round, Creative actually improved the responsiveness of the V3, especially when it comes to multiple touches, such as you need to do two taps, three taps, or you need to hold it for like, you know, two seconds, three seconds, or 1.5 seconds, or three seconds, or six seconds. The chipset within the V3, they are able to act accurately distinguish all this apart and execute the command accurately. And besides that, rejoice! Users can actually customize your commands via the creative app. Yay! What? Now, since I'm speaking of the creative app, the creative app is able to unlock a lot more features for the V3 so that users can actually customize their own personal experience. So on the main screen, you actually see, you know, all the standard stuff like the battery life and all this kind of thing for the left earbud, for the right earbud, etc, etc. And the good thing is that UI users 
huge icons, you know, large wording, which is great, you know, so that users are able to see all the information clearly without guessing what they are. So when you're going to the EQ, uh, it comes with 10 bands for different sound adjustment. And you can save them and you can set them as the preset, it means you can set them as the default. Not only that, it also comes with 43 ready-made EQ. Yes, you heard that right. 43 different ready-made Ready to use EQ. For all kinds of things. Firstly, different kind of music genre, all right, to and it even have like specific settings, EQ settings for in you know, computer games, you know, like LED, like LOL, um, for Fortnite, for Call of Duty. It's all there. It's crazy. Thank you, Creative. You're being very sweet in this area. And not just that. Okay, this ready to use 43 settings, each of them, they can actually, you can actually use them as the base. You can customize them further, which is very good, right? Because a lot of us, we are not audiophiles. Having all these kind of, you know, ready to use uh, EQs, okay? And then from there, you can adjust them even further. It's a really nice feature. Thumbs up, creative. Furthermore, within the additional settings of the creative app, you can also do firmware updates for the earbuds. Now, if you intend to use the V3 for like workout, gymming, jogging, you know, etc, etc, right? It's good to know that uh, the V3, they actually have a IPX5, a waterproof rating. So this means that it can handle rain, water and sweat pretty much okay. Just take note that the case itself has no proper IPX rating. So do make sure that you keep the case in a dry and clean place. In terms of microphone quality, if you remember earlier I was saying that uh, you can actually utilize the ANR with a microphone so that it can make it clearer. For my own experience, I feel that in a quiet environment like here, you're indoor, you're in a quiet room, you're in a library, the V3 actually delivers exceptional voice quality given their price range, really. Um, but once we move outdoors, you know, like we're walking along a busy street, you know, just walking downstairs, uh, just walking along a busy road, the quality of your own voice is um, kind of dependent on the type of environment you're in, outdoor environment you're in, and how much background noise there are. For me, I feel that it's fine when you're walking along a busy road, but once you're sitting in a cafe or you're sitting in a restaurant, on. Your voice will actually get choppy and the volume level of your voice it actually fluctuates quite a fair bit. And this is actually when you're using the ANR feature. Once you switch it off, all this actually goes away. But just take note that the person on the other, on the other line will be able to hear where you are. All right, the noises in the background. All right, they can hear it very clearly. Not only that, but you can definitely hear your voice much better. Okay, so this is something that I hope that Creative will actually uh, release a, f a future update to a firmware update to actually patch this issue to promote better voice quality. So the next segment is a series of sound clips to demonstrate the microphone quality of the V3. Do put on your headphone. This is how your voice will sound like on the iPhone 12 mini. This is how your voice will sound like on the iPhone 12 mini. Hi everyone, I'm currently indoors and I am doing a microphone test on the Outlander Air version 3. It's currently with the ANR feature uh, on for phone calls and I've also opened up the slide window so that you can hear some of the um, to test whether if it's able to reduce some of the outside and environment noise while I'm actually indoors and doing a phone call. So do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Hi everyone, I'm currently indoors and I am doing a microphone test on the Creative Outlander Air version 3. It's currently with the ANR feature for phone calls switched off 
and I've also opened up the side window so that I allow the environment noise, the outside environment noise in as well, so that you can see whether you know is there a difference, uh, how is it reducing the ambience, uh, the environment noise. All right, so do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi everyone, just joining here. Um, I'm walking along the busy road and I am doing a microphone test on the Outlander Air version 3 and I am using it with the active noise reduction feature on with phone calls. So do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi everyone, this is Johnny here. I'm currently walking along a busy road and I am doing a microphone test on the Outlander Air version 3. I'm, I'm currently using it without the active noise reduction feature with phone calls. So do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi everyone, just Johnny here. I'm currently inside a coffee shop. And I am doing a microphone test on the Creative of Lender Air version 3. Uh, this is actually with the AMR phone call uh, feature on. So, do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. One, two, three. Hi everyone, this is John here. I'm doing a microphone test on the Creative Outlander Air version 3 and I'm currently in a coffee shop for this uh, recording I actually uh, switch off the active noise reduction feature for phone calls so do you want to know what you think of the microphone quality has been tested 1, 2, 3 Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a mic test on the M1 MacBook Air built-in microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a mic test on the M1 MacBook Air built-in microphone. Hi everyone, this is Johnny here. I'm currently indoors and I am using the Creative Outlander Air version 3 to record a Zoom meeting session so i have also have beside me is actually a window i actually open up fully to let the outside environment noise come in so the purpose to let you see if you can hear any of the you know not just indoors but also some of the noise on the outside whether is it being reduced by the by this year but all right so do let me know what you think of the microphone quality testing testing one two three all right, so in summary, let's look at the pros and cons of the V3, shall we? So in terms of the good side, exceptional battery life, excellent sound quality, IPX5 rated, it has good microphone, exceptionally good microphone indoors, noise reduction, it has quick charge, wireless Qi charging, it has full app support from Creative. On the downside, I would say it's not the full ANC, that is only ANR, it has a huge earbud, an enormous case. Troublesome pairing. Is it worthwhile to, is it still worth it to get the Creative Outlander Air V3? Or should you get something else? Because holidays are around the corner. Christmas is coming. Thanksgiving is coming, right? The holidays are coming. Well, I would say the V3 is by far the best version of right, the Outlander Air series. Uh, if you can look past its enormous case, it's a huge earbuds. Um, I would say it's one of the best pair of active noise reduction while it's earbuds under the 50 US dollar range. But the thing is that if you want something smaller, lighter, and you don't mind losing some hours, feel free to check out the Edifier W240TN or the Ugreen Hi-Tune X6 
or the Sonic Gear Ear Palm, okay, TWS12. For these three earbuds I just mentioned, I'll put the link down in the description below. Feel free to go and check them out. All right, and there you have it. This has actually been my personal review of the Creative Outlander v 3 Hope it's helped you. If it did, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, share my videos with friends. Anyway, guys, that's all the time we have. My name is Johnny. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.